What's going on everybody? We are live. Sorry, I had an audio issue that I wanted to track down before the stream started. It sounded like a robot again, but we're good. We're fixed. So we'll make sure that it's actually fixed on your guys' end. My initial test though, I'm glad I noticed it because otherwise it would have been another one of those starts to the streams where everyone is making all of the comments about nothing's working. <laughs> anyway, I'm still slightly behind, but tonight we're building one of these guys, the UMG 10 kit, old faithful SCX 10 2 never let you down. <laughs> so let's this out of the way. And yeah, that's the plan. So again, let's, did Josh put portals on his stretch? No, my stretched Unimog is on stock axles currently. Oh, I guess I already opened this. I did not remember that. Is my latency way behind again right now? Maybe so, because you guys are on a lot of a delay. YouTube. So let's, oh, oh, that's right. This kit had already been opened previously, not by me, but not a problem. There's some other things that have been put in here. We'll see what they are. We'll see what I run across. Uh, Nicole is not in here currently. I don't, probably not tonight. I don't know. We'll see. I was behind. So she was given no heads up. <laughs> Not that we don't do it every Friday, but regardless, there was no, there was no heads up. Here. Addy monster. Did I get the shocks? I did get the shocks, sir. And I saw your note on the package of saying, open this side. So I bought some TRX four shocks off of Addy monster from last week. I get a very, a small box wrapped in duct tape for one. Open it up on the side that says open this side. And what is on top of the box is a pair of leaf springs. Of course, a pair of leaf springs. So let's get started. I almost don't need an instruction manual for an SCX 10 too. Let's see where everyone was checking in from since I'm kind of playing a little bit of catch up. Argentina, uh, Illinois, Kansas, and another more than one, Kansas, California, Arizona, Australia. Anyone else buffering? I uh, haven't dropped any frames, so hopefully it's not on my side. New York, Clear Lake, South Carolina, Ohio, Minnesota, upstate New York. Well, the first step is axles and I definitely don't need an instruction for those. Stickerville, California. Moose Jaw is finishing up the uh, Fat Fox Buggy Raw body for me. All 90 some odd stickers worth. But the paint job that I've seen so far, it looks great. So let's see. Uh, SCX 10 2 Unimog versus SCX 10 2 Honcho, your preference. My preference would probably normally be towards the Honcho, although you can't get in a kit, but at least it's, you know, I do like the 12 3 wheelbase personally, most of the time. Oklahoma, Massachusetts, Michigan, Oregon, Pennsylvania, East Coast, Canada. Colorado Hills, okay, Chris, just up the hill. Florida, Buffalo, Washington State, Georgia. Okay. We're, we're busy again. How we do, 
people rolling in. So one thing I, uh, you can see behind me here is that to me, a semi box, which are, that's the trailer, but the trailer's here on the ground. Now I got it built, but man, after, after building that, I'm, I'm almost looking forward to a nice, simple, easy axial build. What do we have here? Oh, this is plastics four. Bag A, plastics one, there we go. Stretch the Mog to 12.3. Mog could be stretched, but the only issue is, is that I, I actually really like the style that they did on the rear bed on the Unimog. And if you stretch it, then you kind of, you lose a lot of that. So I really like, I really like what they did with the UMD. So I kind of think it, I'll have to let it, you know, it'll have to stay the way it is. One, even though this is the kit, the UMG does come with the one piece front housings, but it does come with universals. And if you use the universals on the one piece front housing, I actually think you get, you get really good results out of it. So I'm not, I'm not upset about that at all. It does come with the machined gear sets though. However, these are the older three hole versions of the gear sets. So they, uh, it's not the, the more updated ones, but that's more of an SCX 10 three thing anyway. Oh, the gear set in general on this looks different. They don't have the black that they used to. They're like a, they're more of the bronze color. Interesting. Hey, Scott, thank you for the donation. Dancing Rider or X Rider. Ooh, he's talking about the new one that I got on the shelf right behind me there. And that's the, the X Rider Flamingo. It's a, that's another three wheeler, but it's got more traditional, like a arm style rear suspension and then a motorcycle fork front. And the motorcycle front end steers, you know, act rather than the leaning. So if I could only have one, I'd have a Dancing Rider, but that would be that would be if i could only have one how do you have your trucks mounted in the background uh they're those are ikea shelves so they're 59 dollars each and they're called the lack l-a-c-k lack easy to get cheap they do the job well technically they're only rated for like seven or eight pounds per shelf so, you know, I don't know if I've got anything up there that's pushing the weight limit. Probably not actually, um, but something to, something to keep an eye on. Since I am solo tonight, I'm not ignoring anybody's comments, but obviously I can only, come on. Since we, uh, since we're early on in this stage, let's put ourselves a little pile of Loctite on the piece of plastic. We dip our screw in the end. Easy way to go. Hey, Samuel Lee, also another donation. Thank you. Is the SCX-10-2 still relevant with the SCX-10-3? Also, are AR-60 Vanquish axles coming back anytime soon? So first question, uh, I think that the SCX-10-2 is actually, yeah, it is still relevant. Uh, you know, it's a nice, simple base. You know, it's a, I think that it's a much easier platform to base like a custom build off of compared to an SCX-10-3. SCX-10-3, there's a lot going on with how they have the transmission and all of that. 
The SCX-10 II is a straight axle version, which obviously I, I like the straight axles um, over portals in a lot of situations. So in, there's unlimited aftermarket parts, you know, availabilities and options, the things you can, you can do. So I think that the SCX-10 II is super relevant still. I, it's not something I would shy away. And the value, you can pick them up so cheap. So again, it just the the reasons that they are relevant, I think, just keep kind of stacking up. So yeah. Oh, and then the second question, AR SCX10 or sorry, AR60 VP axles. So the V2 axle, the AR60 V2s are still in production. They continue to just keep cranking away, but the you know, like AR60 hurries, things like that. Those are no longer or not, not never say never, but for now they're not, they don't have a plan to come back into production anytime. Um, anytime soon, I would say. They're, they're not on any, not on any schedule to, to return. Right now it's just any of the 2.2 stuff is just not, not a priority compared to the popularity of 1.9 and since we only have so much capacity kind of have to focus on on what is going to make the most people the happiest hey speed qb texas hey josh you should hang out with rc review sometime and make a vid he isn't that far from me i've been at same you know events with him but Yeah, we need. Will there be 10.3 front axles stocked again soon in clear? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're running, you know, we're running those every day right now. So they'll, they'll continue to just keep kind of cranking through. I don't know if any came back from anodizing today, but it just kind of depends. Like, you know, we get plating done, plating comes in and goes out three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So let's get the power driver out now. And keep this process moving. <laughs> Is Nicole hiding because she forgot to pilfer a bearing kit? That's <laughs> and I definitely didn't tell her what to, to get or anything. Yeah. We can blame her. I wonder how many 10.2 axles I've built. Because, yeah. Uh, is Vanquish ever going to make 11.4 links? Yes. And I think probably, I, I probably will like next week just so that I can put a set on under this. I actually haven't built the UMG 10 kit. I haven't built an 11.4 inch SCX 10 2 kit up to this point. Everything I've built has been the 12 threes or 12 0. So now I need to make myself a link kit, right? <laughs> Addy Monster, VP Leaf Springs, when? <laughs> that, let's see, what, what, can I, what can I think of what we would make before a VP Leaf Spring kit? Let's see, we could make, uh, we could bring spinner wheels back first. Um, we could make helicopter anchors. Um, so many things before that. Has anyone done portal axles on the 10 2? I have a Jeep. Uh, yeah, a lot of people have done portal axles. The SCX 10, the Vanquish SCX 10 2 portals are super popular. We need to, we'll get back to making 
Those available as well. a bath, a brass battery tray. Yes. Screen doors for submarines. <laughs> Come on. Let's zoom. Want to seat. Do it the other way. Put it on the shaft. Uh, I did capper axle swap on the SCX 10 2 for a buddy a while ago. Yeah, capper axle, there you go. Um, get add a little width. There we go. But yes, portals on SCX 10 2, a common mod. Being that they're a centered axle gives you plenty of options. Vanquish hubcaps, brass, everything. VS410 Pro or Ultra. My preference is still the pro i that's the one i enjoy driving the most however my pro also has a portal axle in the rear so it's kind of this weird stepchild between both of them they would make two two wheels and ar60s before lease spring hats yeah <laughs> i mean that's really taking the wind out of my joke but still thanks for the donation pnr rc works Brass roof racks, I like that. Uh, Josh, any mods you would do to an element trail walker? Okay, trail walker is the one, that's the solid axle, right? Not the IFS. So the solid axle one. Uh, servo, even though the stock servo is good on the elements, I would still upgrade the servo. Um, then change wheels and tires. I don't like the 155s on the trail walker. You know, and then from there, I would install the heavier overdrive gear set. I think that that's a good, um, a good mod. You know, the what's it, it's like eleven percent. Uh, run that in there. You know, body mods or things like that. It's totally up to you. And then a lot of modifications past that really depend on that. You know, um, I would probably. You know, the other thing I would do right away is try and look into one of the options for an upgraded panhard mount. That would be my other thing. Uh, SCX 10 2 portals coming back in stock. Yeah, they will. Um, we're we're going to start kind of feeding some of those in. We were trying to just wait and catch up with kits and things like that. But at this point, we're just going to keep, we're just going to start feeding more of those out there in, in the current state. And they're not going to be super plentiful, but when you see them, I would jump on them. All right. So do we have... I thought pins and hexes were in this one too, but I guess not. Now we got a rear axle build. I wouldn't have been able to figure it out without the SBG. Uh, what, what was Alex working on? I posted on Reddit a while ago. Uh, but the other builds on the, I missed it. Sounds like he was talking about something very scale. <laughs> VP brass links went. <laughs> you are absolutely killing me. <laughs> what would, let's see, what could we call VP brass links? Um, because, you know, we couldn't put them under incision. We'd have to come up with a whole new brand name. They couldn't be VP. Couldn't be incision. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Moose Jaw says there's 110 stickers on the Fat Fox buggy raw that he's finishing for me. Whew. It was about capper axle swapping. Oh, okay. When you were talking about doing that, that swap on the S6. Wow. There was people on SBG doing capper swaps on SCX 10 twos. That doesn't seem very scale builders guild. I'm surprised Matt allowed that goober links. SHW super heavyweight. <laughs> VS 410 all brass edition. You know, we have joked many times about for April fools, just picking up a, a, piece of brass material that like the size that we have our axles done in 
because it wouldn't take anything for us to just swap to a different like brass for machining and like making brass axle housings, but just for a joke, because, you know, the only reason that we don't make a lot more brass is since we are, you know, we have to do it. We're of a certain size. We don't want to contaminate chips between the aluminum and the brass in our setup and um, for the, the recycling and all that. But especially because, you know, the big heavy production machines are just going from one to another constantly, but it would make a good oak before. The only reason we've talked about it, like, you know what we should, the reason we're not going to do it is because of how many people would ask us to actually make them. <laughs> like, so uh, we're going to immediately say that this would be a bad joke and we're not going to do it. Yes, an all brass ripper. I can't imagine what that, what that stick of material would cost because the aluminum version is already stupid heavy. April Fool's 2021, VP announces they're switching to brass for everything. <laughs> All parts are being made in brass now. And Josh has quit. Oops. Come on. There we go. I just wish Axial had better servos right out of the box with the trucks. Yeah, I kind of agree with you there that Axial servos out of the box have never been that great. Um, now the Spectrum servos that they've replaced them with, I don't know how, if those are, I actually don't have that like long-term driving experience on those new Spectrum servos. I still just kind of replace them, but the tactics I were never that great. Proline inserts, any good? I actually never run the Proline inserts. I always switch to Crawler Innovations, um, so I really don't run their their two their two stage or anything like that. I always thought that these rear bearing capture screws on these one piece housings were way too long. Like the whole point of that screw is just a, it's a little, doesn't need that much length. What servo is going in the UMG 10? I have not made that decision yet, actually. Um, it's actually a really good question that I hadn't made any sort of thought on. What do I have here? Um, I've got a Fataba or we've got a Holmes SHV 500D3. So, You might use one of those two because that's all I have. <laughs> Everything else I've used. Fataba, the one that, oh, I do have an A700 here somewhere. What do I do with that? I've got, it's here somewhere. I don't know why it's not in my electronic store, but it is. Um, we could use the Holmes, direct power, the whole deal be decent. This thing's going to just be a brushed build. So we don't need anything. Um, do the V3, but if it's noisy, I'd let John know. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Front and rear axles are done. Whoosh. Quick and easy. I forgot to even turn the pages to make sure that I was doing it correctly. But now the most fun part links. We love links. I wouldn't even, 
If it wasn't a Friday night build, I just wouldn't build the links and I would just just wait and build my link kit. But since it's Friday night, I have to because I have to have a truck when it's done. Oh, wait, I forget. You're not supposed to put you should put these in the rod ends, not in the link. It's easiest that way. Right, right. All right. Links and shocks, the most fun part of any build. Totally agree. I'm just going to ram these home right when they're on the tree still. Okay. So I know we need two of those, then those are both straight. Two more. Couldn't get a good enough grip on that one. Convince me to buy the Axial 69 Blazer over the UMG 10. I would absolutely not convince you of that because I think the UMG 10 is a better truck to buy. Um, I had the Blazer and even though, so it's not, it's only a 12 wheelbase. So it's a little bit. So it's still not the long wheelbase, but the body on it is so huge that it's kind of a pain in the butt to drive. So I would absolutely tell you, get the UMG 10. Even if it's a smaller wheelbase, I think it's a better looking truck. I think you'll have more fun. Don't forget the horns. One link done. Nine more to go. Now I need once. Uh, just put leaf springs on it. No leaky shocks and plenty of bounce to jostle your jollies. Jostle your jollies. That is new. That's a new one. There you go. Steering links, but we've got the good old plastic pivot balls. That's another one. It's hard to get behind plastic pivot balls. But axial rod ends kind of suck, so it's not like they're going to stay in there very long. They're just so soft. Where is your, <laughs> your Zergrabotl tool? <laughs> or however you spell it. Zerba is spelled... S-Z-C-Z-E-R-B-A, named after the creator, Chain Zerba. Um, and I don't have it right. It's right here in the drawer behind me, but uh, Axial Links being the whole set screw style, they're just not something I use on that style, really. So since it's a different style of construction it's not as helpful for the record i prefer the other style of construction front links done oh i had to do two of those because it's panhard link too duh Neat. Uh, hi Josh, Fusion 360 made some policy updates and changed the subscription to a month free trial. Did anyone experience it? Is it only a month? Um, I saw that the I saw the changes that they made, but I did not know it was only a month free trial. I think that there's still the ability to get the per free personal use license. They always made that this weird 
trial thing and you had to like jump through hoops to get the personal license. But it's something I should probably do a little bit more research on before this Sunday because that is obviously going to be a question. So, yo, Ben, thank you for the donation. That is crazy generous. I appreciate it. I am glad it's Friday as well. We had a new machine delivery this week. So since last week, Monday is the day that it, it, I can't believe it's only been a week. It feels like it's been a month this week. Uh, we had the, the machine get delivered Monday morning, but then we had contractors there from, well, all week getting, uh, you know, electrical figured out and, you know, rerouting or redoing airlines. We had, we decided to upgrade compressors at the same time. And we also pulled two older lathes out when we dropped this new machine in. So it was a, it's just been a week, man. So much work. And then the machine isn't going to be up and running for about a month because we've got a new robot coming in that'll, will load the machine. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, I don't believe you're allowed to do your streams on fusion 360 if you're on the free license. And I think that there, yeah, there's always a bit of that. It's one of those, um, the, I actually, what do I have? I've got, I also have like the, what I I'm on like a one year business thing. One, one year biz. I bought my Stepcraft. uh, CNC router and it comes with a free one year business version as well. So, or what's the first license use of it? There's something like that. I can't remember what it is. The other thing is, is that it looks like if I wanted to go through all of it, I could get with Autodesk on there marketing side and just push for a free copy, but it's just one other thing that I don't really want to have to do. What is the yellow and green trike behind you? The yellow and green one down there is my, it's the, what? I cannot remember what brand that was now. It's a drift tuck tuck. I can't remember who makes it though. I did it on a Friday night stream a long time ago. Um, it was a blast, but unless you're talking about that trike, which is yellow and blue, and that is the X Rider Flamingo. About forgot the, about forgot the drag link. Yes, tuck tuck, heck yeah. Makers Muse did a quick video describing the chain. Oh, nice. I like him. I'll, uh, I'll go check that out. Makers Muse does such good videos if you're into that type of YouTube. Okay, what length is that? It's a 12. Tuck, yeah. I can't remember what the name of the actual Tuck Tuck was though, or who made it. Someone will have to look it up for me. When are you gonna build a drift car? I almost bought the, uh, I almost bought an, a MST FX 3.0 or something like that. Um, I can't, yeah. Uh, let's see. Robots are cool, but inserts still need to be changed. You mean tools? Like, is that what you mean by inserts? The, uh, the new machine, well, well, basically any of our machines, we run tool checkers, but we have in carousel. This new machine has in carousel tool checking and a, uh, tool setter on the table. So make sure that we don't have a breakage and then cause blah, blah, blah. But you know, for the most part, we run lights out. So, you know, leave on Friday and, Stuff still running on Monday morning, right? As long as you don't have any tools break or anything like that, 
usually we have people in there go check on on Saturday, but uh, yes, it is all about automation. If it's not automated, I don't want it. This will be a good. This new machine will be nice. Uh, Twenty-four hour run times. Just uh, you know, you only have to, we we only run one shift, so it's nice to have twenty-four hour run times without having to have people there. It it is the the way to go. How much extra goofing around does it take to set up the new robo arm? Uh, well, the rep the. I mean, it's a. It's a package deal. It's the company that we got it, or the company whose system it is, it's a Fanuc Robo, or it's a Fanuc Arm, the actual robot. Um, but it's in a package from Trinity Automation. And they'll actually come in, help get it all set up. So it's basically their pallet changing system. And it's got it's got some cool features to it, though. And at a really good price point for, you know, in comparison to a lot of what other, what other options there are. So, but you know, it'll probably be a month before everything's ready to go. We still have to make all of our new fixtures and get everything ready. Proof programs makes for a lot of work ahead, but Something that will end up being very nice. I'm a Mazak technician. Aha. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, does any other machine have that type of workload? So, um, we need a, we have a, I mean, where we have a number of machines that do 24 hour runtime. That's our goal always is to make, is to run 24 hours. So, more wheels, more VFD digs too. Uh, yeah. Hey, thanks for the donation, Mark. And Matt, love your videos. Appreciate it, Matt. Thank you, Mark. More wheels, more VFD digs. Yes, uh, VFD digs are were being finished today. Uh, they'll probably be up Monday, Tuesday. So if you're looking for VFD digs, clear. They'll be up Monday, Tuesday, probably. Most likely Tuesday. I mean, by the time that we get done with all the packaging of all of them and all that. The girls are busy. I mean, more is, uh, is in the code to get it to grab the pallet and set it where it needs to go. Are there multiple programs it can store to move different pallets apart? So it is a pallet changer basically. So it's got, you know, 22 pallet bases around a cabinet basically. And when the machine is done with a program, there'll be a, was it an M code at the end of the program that will basically trigger the robot to come in, pick up the pallet. And then it has its own control to put a pallet away and grab the next one in the sequence of the schedule that says that it's readied. You know, if there's, if you have pallets one through 10 and you're on pallet one and two, three, and four haven't been readied, like they haven't been the old parts taken off and the new one, you know, ready to go again, then, it'll just go to number five, you know, or however your priority list goes. Uh, do you guys have a feral arm there? No, we don't. Um, I would love to have one of those things. The th uh, three, if you're talking feral arm, what I think that you're talking about is the 3D scanner laser touch off probe. And if so, if that's what you mean, then I would freaking love to have one. So, yeah. Um, Dawson just got on. Quick question. Going to order up parts for my build. SC Extend 2 knuckles fit on D44 aluminum axles. Don't know if it's a specific... Uh, same part number. Same part. So you're fine. Um, you can you can pick those up. Whoops. Addy Monster. In all seriousness, no, Josh, if those TRX4 shocks aren't as good as I promised, let me know. I'll send you another set. <laughs> I'm sure they're just fine, man. No worries at all. Matt is here. I didn't see him pop in yet. Let's. There we 
go. Matt the curb kill. All right, these are our front lowers. We got to build a front upper. That's the one that has the wonky links. Y'all got the wrong mat. Does this, is SBG here? I did not see SBG. I'm probably wrong. He said he was going to possibly check it, but I have not seen that. Oh, there he is. Sweet, sweet syrup. Hello, Matt. Have you ever seen anybody build Axial SCX-102 links and be this interesting all at once? It is not, it's not an easy thing to do. Obviously, I'm not doing it either. He commented that he's not giving you any money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just for that, I'm going to go donate on his next stream. Even though that's the same, that's the one I'm on to. I'm donating to myself. <laughs> Flying turkeys. <laughs> it was quite fun teaching Matt that turkeys fly. Not well, not fast, but they fly. All right, so this is that whole orientation thing that we've got to. Let's, there we go, it's that way, and I got it right. Kind of, I got to give it another turn because it's too loose. Whoops. There we go. SBG is watching videos of flying turkey. Yes, that that sounds right. You know what? That's what we should. That's that's the picture I should send in for his Tuesday live stream. Is just pictures of turkeys. Should be Matt the TRX six killer curbs before. I was sold on the shock pliers after seeing Josh use them so often. Oh, yeah. A good pair of shock pliers is a very handy thing. Or just go to Red Lobster and get yourself some surf and turf and take home the crackers. But yeah, the amount of times I've used shock pliers on these streams... What size VP links for a Mori <laughs> Pig Bear? Now, I'm no vintage to me a collector, but I'm pretty sure that's basically the same car as a Bruiser, right? So. Matt's new orange truck is Harley, <laughs> is the Harley McFly. <laughs> I can help shoot pivot balls across the room for entertainment. That is one thing. So these shock pliers, they have a little section here. See this little, this little thing here? And it's made, it's supposed to be like your pivot ball tool portion. But if you try to use that to install it, you usually just end up shooting it all the way through the link. So that's why I use like the bigger section up there and, uh, but I'm not going to lie, these shock pliers are so tore up from me using them on everything but shocks. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. All right, let's install some links. in the middle of building a UMG 10 3 6x6 six six body. Wait, what? These were... I'm in the building and building a 
UMG 10.3 six by six body with UMG 10 bed. Do not like the transmission that came in the 10.3 kit. Is there anyone making the three year transmission pan for a 10.3? I have seen it. I've seen people doing it, but I'm not sure if someone's making it or if that's just a, uh, a custom thing I've seen so far, but that that's one point people were talking about earlier was what's the, is the, is the 10.2 still relevant? And I think because of things like the transmission being so much more complex on the 10.3, that this is still a very relevant hit any of the SCX 10.2 kits really. So, you know, because a lot of the value of the 10.3 is the transmission, you know, and how complicated the chassis has to be to accommodate that. So, you know, it's all, it's all part of it. Someone needs to make scale Sherp tires. Those are some big old balloon tires. Does anybody remember Jumbo Kongs? Those can't be too far off from scale Sherp tires. So front axle with all the links are done. Now we just, links didn't even go too bad on this so far. Now uppers and lowers, let's separate accordingly. Okay. Lowers. RTX 30 series sold out everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yes. I'm, you know what? Not even mad. I wasn't ready for a 30 series anyway. Don't, don't even, don't even need it. Wasn't even totally going to put one of those in my, I don't know. I might, I might have to put a 30 series in my, in my editing machine. Even though it's, this is the computer that I use almost all the time now. Like I edit on that computer only the rest of the time I use this PC in here and this one is not nearly the build that my PC out there is. So I'm just like, I feel like I should just dump everything into here or just go to one computer. Like, why do I need two that are 20 feet away? Like I could take and turn this computer in here into my uh, PC for the my CNC, but at the same time, that's so overkill for what my CNC needs. It needs nothing. Right now it's running on a Surface laptop. Better a red lobster than a black one. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know what that means, but RTX 30 series. What is that? A com is this a computer channel now? Hey, you can let us nerd out a little bit. I mean, nerd out differently because we always nerd out, but just different. The new graphics cards are coming out. Wait a while. These are the new ones. They came out like two days ago. Jumbo Kongs made by IMAX, I think. Yep, IMAX Jumbo Kongs. They were like seven inches tall and like five inches wide. Or maybe they were taller than seven inches. I can't remember. I still have a shot of Jumbo Kongs packed away. They were huge. Wow, somebody actually sees the stuff I type. Hey, Bobby Morphine, yes we do. I'm just not very good at reading all the comments. I look up and randomly read the ones that I see that pop up. Okay, it's Battlestar Galactica time if we are nerding out. I've never seen Battlestar Galactica. Is Battlestar Galactica a TV show or a movie? I guess I should start with that. Because I don't know if it's either. 
Best thing about this is having Josh on mute. Ooh, sick burn. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> the 3080 has more powerful than the 2070 Super and $700 less. It's more power than the 2080 Ti is the thing. 27, wait, the 2070 Super isn't that much, wasn't that expensive, I don't think. Yeah, I think it was the 2080 that you're thinking of. 2070, 2070 Super is what I run, which is a great card, but not that expensive. I don't even think it's a $700 card as itself. Let's see how much of our audience we can alienate all at once by talking about new computer hardware. Raise your hand if you're into computers. <laughs> Sticker number 70 Moose Jaws on. He's getting there. He's closing it. I'm still on a Commodore 64. Well, I'm, I'm sure I look even better in green and black. Commodore 64 had color? Oh, well, see what I know? <laughs> My first computer was an Apple, actually. I had an Apple, Apple II, I think, or wait, what did I have an IBM before? No, it was Apple II first, then an IBM later. C prompt when boot, on boot up and everything. Yeah. The, Type in C colon slash win Apple two E yeah, Apple two E sounds right. It had a mouse. That was crazy. That was crazy. Play hella Oregon Trail. Everybody was jealous of my hunting skills now. Josh, you need to do CEN F450 drag cars. I hate your idea. No. <laughs> <laughs> Problem with doing that is when you have to replace everything that there isn't aftermarket parts for. I still have a Commodore 64. Are you people serious when you say these things? I can't tell. Because Alex, I think you're younger than me and Commodore 64s were like before me. Steve Jobs, RIP. <laughs> Thanks for the donation. <laughs> I am. I have a lot of old computers. My favorite is an original Macintosh. Hmm. All right. I'll give you that. Nerd points. Who are you calling people? I have a Commodore 64, an Atari 800 XL, an Amiga 500 and 1200. I almost know what none of those are. Dropped it. Where'd he go? Drop the soap. I do collect old media tech, like laser discs, gam gaming consoles, because I need more things to spend money on than just airsoft and RC. <laughs> Did I build this the same way? There we go. Uh, so when you make a 3D printed hovercraft, not a terrible, I think the only problem with that idea is that 3D printed hovercraft still needs some sort of like rubber skirting or sewn skirting to make it decently functional, right? I still have a laser disc and a dat. What is a dat, Eddie? 
I don't know that I've heard. What was the one that was, is that like the VHS that wasn't, or no, that was Betamax, Betamax? Is that right? That's right. Is the Predator compound really the Holy Grail or is G8 fine for trans? I prefer G8 in most situations. Um, I'm looking at crawlers or TSL3 in choice. Um, personally, I, I think that the compound of the Predator is a little too soft. It gives a little much. So for me, it's just, it's one of those things like different compounds work better for different people and different applications. But for me, I prefer G8 compound uh, almost exclusively. There's some situations like really cold weather that are wet weather that I like, or is it wet? God, I can't remember. I think the Predators did better in the wet for me than the G8s and the cold. So other than that though, G8 every day. Did someone answer what DAT was? Digital audio tape? That's not real, is it? it what is it? Huh. I've never heard of DAT. Heard of DAT? Eh. Leisure Suit Larry was the shit. I played Leisure Suit Larry. The, fir the first one I played, though, it wasn't like the straight text base. It was text. Like, it had pictures and text. It wasn't animated all that much, like basic animation, but it didn't, like you weren't moving around. It was just like something would pop up. Never could really get it. I think I was too young to really get it because if I remember hearing correctly, that was more of an adult oriented game and I just didn't understand. All right, plastics two should be shocks and transmission, yay. Bag C, bag D. God. Do I have... I don't want to build these shocks. I'm. They're not going to stay on anyway. Are they worth... They're not worth building, right? Can we say that? Can I not build them? And you guys would be fine with that? We're not going to build the shocks. <laughs> I'm glad we could agree on that before the chat even caught up to where you guys could see. Don't get lazy. I'm getting lazy. I'm not building the shocks. <laughs> Maybe if I get done, if I get done with everything so quickly that, you know, are we an hour in already? We're an hour in already. If we finish the rest of the chassis in under two hours, then I'll go back and build that. Stuff rattling around in my semi-truck box. Okay, these are shock parts, so we're just gonna go ahead and put those aside. Look, we're already on to the next page. Axial transmission. I just got here. What are we building? We are building the Axial SCX-102 UMG kit. I'm thinking I might fire up Neo Geo after this stream. God, I have no idea what this stuff is. Neo Geo. I'm from the Matrix. Right. Let's just continue to open all of this up. This truck will get finished. Yes. Any chance he'll actually finish. I am finishing. You're fast. I would still be correcting and highlighting all the mistakes on the first two pages of the manual. <laughs> Yeah, no shortage. I 
I guess that the only reason that I uh, you know didn't run into that is because I didn't look at it. All right, so we need what M two by ten, ooh by eight shorty pin. So short we need bearing first, then the shorty pin, and. I gonna... That's not how that thing went, right? That's how it shows it. That seems very odd. One, then two, slide on three. Okay, we're gonna go with it. Oh yeah, I think the, uh, I don't remember what holds that bearing in place. I suppose we'll find out. I do remember this transmission being a bit of a pain in the butt. Spacer number six, long, long one. Mark Cargill donation. You open Pandora's box. Just open them all. That and then the other. Off topic, my washing machine is having issues. Who has a top loader? They <laughs> No, you're not asking me about laundry stuff. Because that's not going to get you anywhere. Bottom. But eight mil. And we've got the big boy gear. Um. Oh wait, was mate was fish in here? Where was he? Ja Fusion three hundred and sixty will still have a personal license, but it'll have some. Yeah, I saw the limitation stuff. Like it's not gonna allow you to uh, export in DXF format, which seems like the craziest shit in the world because DXF is AutoCAD's format. Like, how are you not just gonna have all of your programs be able to export in your format? What in the world are you doing? And then there was like a 10 file limit thing. There's some weird stuff that I do not like, but we'll see. We'll see. If so, I will, I will just keep renewing at a commercial license because for me it's worth it. But for everybody, I could see how it's going to go from this amazing option. And honestly, if it becomes a huge pain that no one has it, like no one's going to watch STL Sunday. So might as well kill off that stream. Like it makes no sense anymore if that's the case. So we'll see. Autodesk does some weird stuff sometimes. Right. So got that end in top shaft. Where the hell did I put it? There it is. I definitely should have grabbed a vanquished top shaft. I definitely didn't, but go spins properly who knows by the time this thing is done I'll probably have a three gear and a dig so <laughs> no Nicole chat gets crazy <laughs> true yes she helps keep things in line All right, and we've got to screw this case together. What length are these? 148s, 18 mils. Keep doing STL Sunday. I, I like STL Sunday, it's more for me, you know, but 
if Fusion 360 becomes this crazy limited option, then, you know, it's not going to be nearly as useful for everybody. And I just don't know that it's going to make any sense, but I'll keep an eye on it. So, because like I said, it's one of those ones I, I do like doing. Um, when, damn, just when I was starting to get the hang of 3D design. Yeah, I would stay in it. If you're getting the hang of it, if you're getting the hang of it, it's worth staying with. Cause it's, I mean, it's a life skill basically. You'll, there's so many opportunities for you to use 3D design in, you know, if you get a 3D printer, you get whatever you do, any project you may have in the future, like it could be a freaking home remodel. You might find that drawing it up, but because you know 3D modeling, you're gonna be able to visualize a project that you've got in the future, like so much better. Just, man, stay with it if you if you can, if you like it, it's, it will be worth it. You will not. I just, you know, it's one of those things like, I use it all the time. The new, like I was talking about, we got a new machine this week. We, I planned out 20 different ways we could organize the shop to drop the new machine in. Like, what if we put it here? What if we put it here? Moving it around. Just like, just being able to be familiar with a program will allow you to play with things quickly and easily. And you just don't even have to think about it. You can just go through it and get things done. It's just. So not, you know, not just in RC or a silly hobby, you'll find, you'll use it. Don't give up. Okay. And idler gear. Why did I think that the idler gear in this one had a different style? Is this YouTube channel for crawler? <laughs> What's going on, John Grant? Uh, Tim saying, Josh, keep STL Sunday. I just got an Ender 3 and built a cargo box. Came out really stringy, but my first print. Yeah, first prints. Like, don't get discouraged by that. Some of my first prints were garbage, but you'll get through it and it'll turn out great. Throw some grease in here. What would you consider a silly hobby? Um, a silly hobby. Hmm. What would I consider a silly hobby? I mean, like, I can't even think of one because <laughs> you can't think of any rebuttal that would make any hobby more or less silly than what we're doing. <laughs> I can think of, you know, so many dumb things I find enjoyment in that I can't think of, you know, like I was going to say bird watching, but why is that any weirder than golf? Like, which I also like or train spotting, like, I don't know. If it makes you happy, who cares? I mean, there's certain things that I like to do more than others. And there's certain things that I think are good or bad decisions, but I don't really, if it's your thing, have at it. As long as you're not bird watching in my window, you're okay. 
like wild turkey washing. <laughs> well, that was not an M3 screw. <laughs> I'm going to start posting pictures of wild turkeys now. Got to be kidding me. Didn't even remember where those small screws were, but they're for the motor plate cover. Um, disc golf. I actually like disc golf. I don't, I'm not good or I haven't done it very many times, but I think disc golf is fun. <laughs> I collect Game Boys. I even have a Toyota branded Game Boy. Everyone has weird hobbies, right? I'm not here to hobby shame. <laughs> Hippie Frisbee. <laughs> Hippie Frisbee. It's kind of great. Like out here, there's so many disc, like disc golf courses and stuff like that. Just, back home, there was just not that many. I mean, there's, they were around, like that's where I played, but. And I mean, I played, I went to a disc golf course maybe like three or four times ever. Disc golf is the ultimate yuppie sport. I hate yuppies, but uh, I hate yuppies, but I love it. The duality of man sure is something. Wait, why would disc golf a yuppie? I've got to hear the rationale behind that. It's like the last thing I feel would be a yuppie sport. How many of you are into other RC, like FPV drones? That's a that's an interesting one. Um, I mean, I feel like, you know, there's people who are into like all kinds of RC or you're into just like one. I used to be just one RC, that was it, no exceptions. But then more recently, I've really started to to branch into the other areas a lot more. You know, I've got more bashers now. I've got drifting tricycles and go fast tricycles and leaning tricycles up there. <laughs> Anymore, I find so much fun in, like, I want to own all the oddball RC stuff. Oh, who is it? Uh, New Mexico Desert Racer saying, that he's, I fly FPV and sailplanes. Sailplanes is one of the ones that I wanted to do. Like the ones where they, they're powered up and then you just glide around. I actually want to fly more. I want to get into like, I want to fly planes a little bit more. Some more of the long range stuff. I've got like a long range setup. Um, it's like, what is that? Crossfire that I've never used. All that, um, just, and I'd like to get my FPV wing going. I've got my fat sharks and, um, like I have everything for FPV. I've just only done it a handful of times and I would really like to fly more than use the quads. I found that I enjoy flying a lot. I like that kind of just floating around rather than doing the acrobatic side. Phoenix, I collect discontinued axial ribs. <laughs> I really enjoy flying. Yeah, I I would like to do it more. So drive the RC Speedy Capra yet? Jeremy Burris was asking. No, it where is it at? It's right there. Um, it's got some major issues with the the design of it. So. I'm going to have to really sort some stuff out before I can. So, yeah. Um, Josh, weren't you getting a night radian? I don't know what that is. So probably. Unless maybe, and I didn't know what it was called. <laughs> um, 
I want an RC pod racer from Star Wars. I don't really, I kind of, that's the one that had like the little short wings and like the gun things sticking out the side, right? Uh, I like to fly, but it takes everything out. I like to fly, but it takes everything out of me stressful even. That's what, I just feel like that whole gliding around thing is so much, so much fun. Night Radiant is a power. Oh, that was the little, yes, that was one that I was looking at getting. Um, it's got the little folding prop up front and everything, right? Yes, that was one I was absolutely looking at. These days I collect LiPo batteries. That is a relatable, <laughs> relatable feeling, RC Mask Master. I need power to get some altitude, yeah. Sorry. All right, powered glider, that'd be a plane, wouldn't it? So it's like you power it up and then you turn it off, the prop folds back and it's got the big, and you can kind of glide around. I need to find somebody here in Sacramento who can go do a little bit more flying around. Sorry, I don't mean to pop my knuckles on the stream. I know that's it's a habit, a bad habit. There we go. Since I don't have the motor yet, we're just gonna get this put on. I try to collect money, but it's not working. Damn it. Eddie, I'll teach you how to crash. <laughs> Perfect. Did you pick up the Tamiya Mechanical Tiger yet? <laughs> that I have not yet. That is weird. What the? I have a misformed screw or something. The M. Weird. <laughs> I collect broken red cap portals. Uh, Josh, get the UMX radiant. I'll look at that. Any giveaways tonight? I don't know. Giveaways kind of hit us in the uh, in the moment, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see if that happens. I still need to ship out the uh, Proline body, Proline van body, and the last one. And I need to figure out who won the <laughs> the other giveaway. One other thing that I have yet to get accomplished. Josh slacking couldn't be slacking and prioritizing different ways to to word things. All right, trans is done though. We're gonna set that aside, ready for that. And now we've got to build some drive shafts. Let's see, where are they? Josh is for bush room. Yes, this is very true. <laughs> um, Harley, new here, bro. Where are you from? I am originally, originally from Nebraska. I grew up in a small town called Fort Calhoun. And then out of, I went to college at Nebraska. And after that, I moved to Kansas City. And I was in Kansas City for 10 years. I was an engineer there, and then 
I moved to California to work in RC full time. So now I live in California. Drive shaft. Let's find the drive shafts in this huge bag of plastic. That's Dropped parts. That's okay. We'll get them out. Do you know Melissa Lincoln? I do not know Melissa Lincoln. I've never, I don't think I've ever met anybody with the last name Lincoln. Thoughts on helical gears for straight cut gears. Um, I prefer helical gears, con more contact pack. Um, but I even more so prefer high point gears like in the SCX-10 too, you know, with the high pinion then. I prefer that over either, which there is a difference between high point and just regular helical. Do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man lives on Dreary Lake. My gumdrop buttons. Look her up. She is a famous Nebraska alum. Hmm. Am I going to find her on sites that wouldn't be appropriate? Or is it somebody I should, was it somebody I should just actually know from being like a philanthropist? <laughs> Why is she? Will the new Bright 2020 Bronco fit what you are building? I have no idea. I honestly have no, uh, no desire to build one of those. So I've never looked at the specs. I know that it's a shorter wheelbase than normal, but I don't know what the wheelbase is. And I just, yeah, like I said, I have no interest in building one. So we need one of the drive shaft sides. Need to print the Night Customs grill for the UMG-10. Oh, that's a good idea. Actually, I think that I've got the actual, uh, like the other, the Shapeways printed one for it. I think, if I remember. Can't remember, though. Is anybody hoarding unpainted Traxxas Telluride body? Whoa, that seems like a very specific request. Let's see, what do we need? A Two of the number ones, two of the shorties. That is this guy. And one that I didn't find, there it is. Is this number one? Oh, that's number four. I need two number ones. The other one fell off because I can see where it's supposed to be. Was it this bag? No, it was not this bag. Hmm. Well, this is interesting. There's another one. They're like mislabeled with a one and a three night right next to each other. Uh, Horizon Hobbies will buy out A Main Hobbies. Oof, that's a is this a prediction we're going for here. That would be a that would be a tough one. I mean, that would be a an interesting prediction there. That would definitely start wrapping up the RC industry into one uh, one pretty 
pretty tight umbrella. You'd have Arma, or you'd have a uh, Traxxas or Great Plains. And Great Plains would have like everything else. Sorry, I'm doing a poor job of reading and building right now, but this is one of those parts that takes eye contact. Okay. Otherwise, I can usually build quite a bit while not watching. Yes, Team Associated too, but Team Associated is a, a, a smaller one because it'd be like Tamiya Associated, I guess you could say, you know, like you start looking at some of them like RC Mart, you know, they're a pretty big distributor. You've got all the little brands, you know, MSTs and and all of those. But we should all post insults. I have moderators in here that are pretty good. They're on it. Mike J, always in here trying to cause trouble. I would have to spend all my platinum points on something if Ryzen buys a main, right? <laughs> yeah, all your loyal, all the loyalty points. Again, sorry if I miss your comments. If you really do have a question, just post it again. I will try and read them. But I just look up, read a comment quickly, and get back to work. So, what if we all said Josh smells? See, it just happened to be the one that I read when I looked up. You need a five and a four. There's a five, there's a four. There we go. Five, four. What I don't see is another transmission side end sleeve though, which I need. Yeah, um, my smell of vision isn't working, luckily. <laughs> Mike J needs to see the principal. <laughs> what happens now? Do kids have to have a video conference with the pr principal right now? What's your opinion on the Sentinel Aluminum 1.9? I have no idea what that is. Is it just one of like the knockoff wheels? If so, I have very strong opinions on why they're terrible and awful for the hobby as a whole. Zoom meetings for everything. Reminder, roundabouts, traffic circles suck. Boom. Trying to get me trying to get me mad tonight. Early design class is in session. Where is that other sleeve? You know how the axial has a different end for the drive shaft, one that goes on the transmission side, one that doesn't. This is horseshit. One there, it's not the right one. God damn it. You get caught on the parts tree or the shock tree. Negative. Um, okay, this is an issue because we need it. Because if you try and put the other one on the transmission, stuff binds up. So, er, 
guess we're gonna put the other one on for a moment and I will hunt for it later. While I likely forget and then have to go through this process again. Can we ban Josh and keep saying dude? <laughs> Banning me just makes everything go on mute. No, hold on, hold, hold, please. There we go. Hit the random drive shaft box under your desk. It is under my desk right there. And I will, if I need to, when we hit the assembly point. But like I said, there's a good chance that I'm going to be going with a three gear and a dig in this thing. So while I'm at it, you know, why not put drive shafts in it? No, an issue would be a traffic circle and a sleeper with a 53 foot trailer. <laughs> yes, I will say that both things depend on proper design. But you can badly design anything and make it suck. All right. Uh, I didn't like leaf springs until I got a TF2 from someone who knew how to hook it up. I've driven some well set up leaf sprung trucks and they suck less. But there's the catch. They just suck less. So we've got the standard three gear and the newer style transmission skid plate in there. Hello, I'm late. What's going on tonight? We are building the Axial SCX-10 II UMG-10 kit. F. I realized I forgot to put in that stupid mounting foot right here. That thing. Dang it. Can you, can you install that without having to completely open the transmission? Oh wait, you can. Can you? Am I lying? No. Wait, can I just loosen this tail shaft? Well, let me separate. Oh, just enough. Just enough. Just enough. Boom. Perfect. <laughs> leaf sprung, leaf springs suck a whole hell of a lot less than traffic circles. <laughs> okay, we got that. You know what I didn't do, or what I did do wrong? is that I put the front drive shaft on the rear and the rear on the front because it always seemed like this axial transmission should have been the other way around. Dale C, thank you. I'm late. Did I miss anything? Probably not the angry librarian is not here. <laughs> Any plans for the weekend? Um, so... I have a lot of plans for the weekend, I guess, but all of them have to do with um, basically videos and getting some projects done and ready for release. 
I want to get the bomber done this weekend and a video up of that. The long wheelbase UMG 10 video up of the, the uh, current status before it goes off to paint. Um, and then I've got a bunch of other stuff. I've got another video that I have to get ready for a scheduled release in about a week. So yeah. Oh, and I bought the GoPro Hero 9. So I'm looking forward to getting that and I'm hoping to go shoot some run video with it. How about some woods runner work? I'm hoping. So this week I got in uh, some new stuff. It's like a two part epoxy type coating. It's made for smoothing 3D prints, but I want it to try and well to smooth the 3D print, but also to give it like a, a gel coat kind of so that I can use it for some uh, uh, like a mold so I can put a mold release on it and have a nice smooth surface because I'm hoping that I can uh, I can do something with the, the carbon fiber stuff I'm really interested to do that I'm waiting on some parts for my step craft right now which is holding me up and they're supposed to ship next week I'm told so that is my my big hold up right now So, but oh, the reason that I'm waiting on the parts for that is that I'm hoping to mill some, some certain stuff, some special. I have plans for doing some of the, the 3D, some molding stuff, and then also using the step craft to do some second operation to actually clean it all up and do some, some fun, fancy stuff. Oh. Okay. That. Get an Insta 360 camera. I mean, I thought about 360 cameras, but for RC stuff, like, I always know what I want to be pointing at. Like, I'm not really interested in looking up at my face from like a super awkward, dumb angle and getting mostly me walking like an idiot. So that's what's uh, stopped me from the 360 stuff. Otherwise it's cool, but I think for RC, it's just not something I care about having as nearly as much. I got it. Maybe be better at walking. <laughs> that, you know, that should be step one for me in general, uh, since my walking is obviously quite inhibited. But, you know, until I can, until I can pick up some new ankles, might have to. Unless it's a crawler with a kick-ass interior. Yeah, and I just don't like onboard video in RCs. I just, it just never really looks that good. So, I, again, it's just like, eh. Legal in Cali. Wait, what's legal in Cali? So we got that. Where is our, there's the servo mount. We're going to go ahead and skip the whole this. This was the most comp. That is one thing Axial definitely could have improved on is that how overcomplicated they had made this battery tray servo mount assembly. Like when they went to the one in the honcho, that was one piece like that was honestly, I thought an upgrade other than the fact that it didn't have the, uh, 
the what was that the the winch mount other than the fact that it didn't have that i thought everything else was better about the one piece mount Why is everyone saying Hope Nicole is... She's fine. She's over there. With the TV up loud. No, it's not too loud. We did have to buy a new TV this week. Oh, hey, I missed a donation. Oh, sorry. Where is it? Matthew Jorgensen. To help pay for shipping at the ProLine van for Tom. Hey. <laughs> what do you know? Nice. Hey, perfect. Yes, he was Red Cat of CT, I think, was the, the winner of it. That and a bunch of other stuff that he didn't want, I'm sure. Um, uh, what size TV? Uh, Costco had on sale a 65-inch LG for $529. So I haven't had to buy a new TV. You just guess the last year that I had to buy a new TV. We'll see. This, this will be fun. Let's see. This goes on the bottom. Oh, I need to open another bag F. Where's the bag F? Oh, Thomas Forrester was Forster was the first one to get. Two thousand seven is correct. That was the last year I had to buy a new TV, buy a new TV for the living room. Now, that's not the TV that died on us this week. The TV that died on us was actually my brother's old TV that he he got a new TV a couple of years ago, and he had one that wasn't all that much newer, but so I had bought a 40 inch Samsung in 2007 and it lasted until like a couple of years ago or a few years ago. And my brother was like getting himself a new something fancy curved. So I took his old one, but now it died this week. So I had to go buy a TV which the box barely fit in the Jeep. We took a truck to go pick it up. And then, oh, Isogen was the first I see, I missed it. But uh, yeah, so took a truck to go pick it up from Costco initially, but then we, uh, we discovered the issue when we got back to the shop and started to transfer it. and realized that, oh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> uh, there's a killer use for the backlight on LCD TVs. Hmm. I don't know, what would it, what is it? Josh, throw those shocks in the travel case when you sent, yeah. Right. Team, those are eight mils. Nope. I've got 10. There's the eight mils. I'm grabbing tens. You're not, you're not lagging unless you're on dial. Right. Backlight from an LCD screens are great for photo shoots. Oh, well. I am not much of a photographer. I just know that there's no way that the TV that I bought this week for, you know, $500 basically is going to last more than about three years. Whoop. 
don't make them like they used to. Hey Josh, out of curiosity, what are those TRX4 shocks going on or is that a secret? No, they're for, um, we were discussing it, what was it, two Fridays ago. I had a used truck in here that we, uh, that I brought in and we went through just this whole truck top to bottom, put a new set of bearings throughout, kind of was looking to see what other issues could have been. And it had, can't remember if it had two or it had at least two bent shock shafts. So the whole truck basically did not, the whole, it was basically just frozen. You had to like, just, it was off. So needed a set of TRX four shocks to replace since TRX four shocks are great shocks for the money. Cause usually you can buy them for 30 or 40 bucks. So for the money, pretty good. Pretty good shocks. All right, I'm not going to put on the little under tray winch servo guide because I think that is not going to happen. Unnecessary. And we'll put that screw in though. Uh, just know you're not a big fan of wheel spacers, true. But what are your thoughts on spacers for 124th rigs? Uh, recently got the HR extended axles, seems more planted. Well, I mean, so much is different on 124th. Like the scale of things really just changes things every time. Um, you know, if you can overpower the, the steering, you know, if you can make sure that it's they're proper for it, then great. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of little things like that. A lot of times I really don't like the way that wheel spacers look. Um, but on a 124 scale rig, like I don't, I don't know, maybe it'd be fine. Oh, the new, yes, the new iPhone. Up I'm going to have to do that new iPhone update tonight so I can get all the new widgets and crap like that. I'm home. Forgot that this one also has the whole bot. There we go. Get in the So we've got a Get the body mount lined up. Shock mounts. And Oh, that's why I see now. Cause I screwed up. Uh, happy Friday. Why aren't we tearing down a flamingo? <laughs> I know I want to work on the flamingo as well, but I'm not. In order to pay for that, how many RC trucks to pay for that bill? Missed it. Android all, no, not an iPhone all day, every day. Come on. Thing just did not want to line up. It's a little peg molded into it and it just doesn't want to seat. There we go. A little bit of a pop.
Looks like a good crawling day. To, it does look like a good crawling day tomorrow. However, I have got a list of things to get done. Freeze frame again. Oh, it's weird. My uh, PS isn't showing any issues, but. Uh, what don't you like about the kit, Tran? I do wish that it would have been flipped around the right way. It needed it needs a new top shaft. There's in general, I just like the simplicity of the three gear over, you know, the motor's lower on the three gear. It's more forward than on this one. I think just in general, I just like the I like the simplicity. At one point I really I liked this transmission, but just over time I got to the point where I just preferred the other one and ended up going back. Uh, Tom F, are you adding the MFU to the Tamiya truck? I am. I will. I, yes. MFU will be going in the semi when I start the build. I'm looking forward to that as I have never built a Tamiya semi. Tamiya, Tamiya. Can we get this to line up? There we go. Size screw one one four eight mil shorty. Yeah, that's the other thing is like, I probably want to run a dig in this. So that alone is reason to go to a, or good enough reason for me to go to a free gear. Thinking about doing my uh, fan, uh, talking, you guys having your conversations back between each other. <laughs> uh, will the three gear clear the interior in the UMG 10? It's an excellent question. And thank you for the donation. Um, I don't know. I suppose we're going to have to find out. <laughs> um, it definitely could get pretty tight. We may have to. Uh, we may have to investigate further some of that, but so we need the front bumper support and the front body mounts. Let's that's bumper and grill. This is just wiring. Where is DOS parts. Hmm. I figured that the there's the front mount that I need there. Front bumper support though. I do not see. So that's gotta be up here. Okay, I, okay I'm, I have to grab the Flamingo since everybody's talking about it and I think it's cool. This is the Flamingo, the X-Rider Flamingo. So it's got independent rear suspension. First of all, it's got a freaking bobblehead. It's a hard body. It's got a detailed 
engine in the back with exhaust and a wing. Um, it's a tiny little brush motor. This is a big roll bar. I mean, the front tire is extremely small. Uh, but it's a brushed RTR and it's like 160 bucks. Uh, I'm going to, I'm hoping to possibly do a video on this this weekend. So I'll let you know if it's worth, if it's worth picking up, but it's pretty freaking cool. The battery is right up under there. See it, but we'll see. I'm going to run it this weekend. Freaking bobblehead though. That's going to be fun. <laughs> you and Matt need to do a speed trial on that thing. Like the two are six. See if we can make it do half as much since it only has half the wheels. All right. Back to this. I gotta find this free, this front bumper support or the front cross brace. The standard two post front cross brace. Um, skid plate axles chalk parts we know they're not any of those this is very frustrating hmm I <laughs> oh. is anyone else mad for me? Because this is ridiculous. And it's like the one part that I know I don't have any of here. Not because I had to find one for a different project. Just specifically because I didn't have any. I mean, they shouldn't be in that. I'm an idiot. I got it. I got it. Ooh, this one has two of them even. How lucky am I? Good grief. I know. Solved. The mystery is solved. Admittance is the first step. Oh, I'll admit. Okay, so we're going to line that up. And those front body mounts were right here. Which one do I need? Seven. There it is. Finally back, I missed a lot. But did you really, like, did you really actually miss it? Oh, something else that did show, if I didn't already have this planned, got it. Uh, if we didn't already have this planned, then I was go my one of my kits that I ordered well over a month ago, almost two months ago maybe, showed up today. My RC motorcycle finally here. So next week.
Next week, RC Motorcycle. Did the Air Ride Bronco sell yet? It did sell. It sold the a uh, couple of days ago. I need to update the site on that. So that one is gone. Sold. Or not gone. Hasn't shipped yet, but it's sold. Like Ben knows. Terrible at shipping. That one also had some other parts that were required for it. So it has been, they have been located now. Everything will go. Put this away, bust out the motorcycle. Wow, Suki is quite loud. She went in here. We'll see if Nicole lets her in. Probably not. Okay, we need our transmission. Oh, oh yeah, we do have. All right, we'll see if it came back. We'll see if, hopefully that fixed it. I saw, I looked up and I saw the, my OBS was maxing out, wasn't working. So I think we're, we should be fixed now. Yeah, it's. It's usually pretty clear when stuff stops working for me, but just because I notice it doesn't mean I can fix it yet. So. I had to I had to stop my my broadcaster and restart the stream, so but it does, that only takes a second, so after that everything should be good. Can you guys back to normal? Back to your regu regularly scheduled stream. This is like the one awkward part of this set. The slider, chassis rail, skid plate, first screw. Perfect. Done. Uh -huh. Success. Do you like scalar flab sliders? I've used those before in a number of situations. I like them for certain certain applications. All right. Oops. Now, yeah, we need one of those M two point six jobs. Little tiny guys. There we go. I think. There it is. Josh, what servo for a bomber? Like the Rock 412 you suggested and hoping the servo will put it. So for me, I'm using the Fataba S9177SV. That's the one that I prefer in my bombers most of the time. Uh, although in my new bomber up there on the shelf, I, where is it? That side, that one. I think I actually, I put a Tekken servo on that one. I think I put a T360 or a T440, can't remember. I'm actually running a Tekken servo in one of my VS410s as well. So I've had actually really good luck with them. Uh, they're not like the most powerful, which is odd for me because I usually run stupid powerful servos in everything. Uh, but I've had good luck with it. It's held up to a lot of miles and a lot of abuse. Yeah, the uh, 
Scaleth Ant slides are good for, you know, they're basic overall, but they've worked fine. What? 1.6 is 12 in all. Can we move the Woods Runner to a higher shelf? <laughs> Let's see. It could possibly, because the Ultra actually has to move. Those, that one there is the other Ultra. That Ultra and the pros on the floor there. Those are two that I have a video that I hope to do this weekend. I've been hoping to do it for like three months, but I need to get it done. So it feels like this weekend I should. Shelf two, number, number two and three, yes. Those two. Really, it's way better than that thing. That thing should be like th probably there. That I'm less than less than super impressed with that RC Speedy chassis. The construction is good. The design is what's poor. I had a Got the wrong shock tower three times. Okay, we need rear shock tower brace. Away. And we need to go all the way forward for the position, obviously, because it's the shorty. Switch the JL for the Woods Runner. My J I don't even I don't even have I don't even have a JL in here. My SCX3 is at the shop. I've been using it for test fitting. All right. And rear chassis brakes. I know where that's at. Wait, is it this one? This. I wish I had triple digit horsepower. Is Alex talking about his Yaris again? What's a Yaris have? 94, 97, somewhere in there. Josh, are the shelves you have your RCs on a kit you bought or you build them from scratch? They're from Ikea, so they are very much a kit. They are $59 a shelf. Not, not like one, two, three, four, like one shelf, two shelves. So they're pretty cheap. And being Ikea, they're made cheap. So bonus. But I've had them for like five years now with trucks on them. And they've done great. So can't, can't beat that for Ikea quality. I think that one thing I did do when I put them together is that I did put like some three inch wood screws in through the back into each shelf. Now, I don't think that it really did anything because, you know, Ikea shelves are made out of old newspapers and you know, must be another rear. All right, there we go. That's the one I need, but but yeah, it's uh you know it was the thought that counted. Maybe two. I miss IKEA meatballs. 
the first time I ever went to an Ikea was just after my 30th birthday in Chicago. I remember, I remember it because I was working in Chicago for, I was up there for three weeks helping uh, the Chicago office of my firm on a big project. And <laughs> there was a big party the night before I left Chicago and I was quite hungover. But Nicole said I had to go to Ikea before I drove home. Yeah, but quad shelf would be fabulous. <laughs> so the one problem is, is that this, I have a, this straight wall and then it, there's a little bit of an 45 and then again, like I almost, I wonder that maybe one shelf, one more shelf, I could do one more. Hmm. Double the shelf, I think that'd be too much. I could maybe get away with one more behind me, but like normally it's just off to the, it's just, I don't know. I'd have to like move over here, like adjust the camera slightly, which I could do. Ikea in Schaumburg, exactly. Because Schaumburg is where our office was. Or my, my firm's, they had the Schaumburg office and I stayed in the Schaumburg Hilton for three weeks. No, that's not true. I stayed in the Hilton for one week and then had to move hotels. Less than ideal. But I like Chicago. Chicago's a cool place. 10 out of 10 would visit. Would the shelves be plumb and level though? Yes. Every shelf in here is level. Even that one, which doesn't look level, but we've proved it live on air that it is. We've put a level on it on air. Okay. More screws. Thought we were talking about wait, what what is that? Phone levels don't count. Phone levels count for visualization of a stream. looks level from out here. It's just the angle. It's the camera. As things start getting up, they start like those. They don't look level. They look, but it's just the bubble. Right. We need the other. There. Looking like a chaffy. This thing's going to go together so quickly here soon. It's all going to just fall into place. The fast part of these axial builds is it mirrors the sound off now. Hopefully my audio levels still show oh.
Dang it. Hopefully. Sorry, it's okay. Stopped stream, restarted again. YouTube's getting hammered a little bit tonight, so um, I'm my internet speeds are good. It's just every once in a while things get backed up, and then I get shafted on that. But we're getting there. Josh, are using Matt's beaver-powered internet. <laughs> Let's watching on watching on Commodore sixty four. My end is fine. So, oh, we need to put the other front body mount on though. And. Yes, I guess that's the other thing I didn't discuss is that uh, I'm not doing the body because the body is getting sent to uh, be painted. So, I mean, I'm not going to assemble it just so that I have to ship it in a bigger box. That wouldn't make any sense. So instead, it's going to go like this. <laughs> Now you guys have me thinking that I should go get a third shelf. Dang it. Oh, you know the bigger problem with getting a third shelf was that current. I would have to check because I have separate RGB for the shelving. So I have it I have RGB strips on each side of the shelves. So I would have to I think I can extend it. But there's green. Ooh, we can go to What did I have to hit? Um Ooh. There, we'll leave my fancy RGB. But I would have to extend that whole thing so that I could make it. Josh, when are you gonna man up and learn how to airbrush and paint your own damn bodies? You know, you just can't be good at everything. So I'm just gonna have to leave something out there for people to be better at me. <laughs> I kid, I kid, I know I'm not there. Jokes, guys. We got jokes. With three, you can do red, white, and blue LEDs. Do it for Dale. Except I don't actually have individual control unless I did three remotes, which that would be a pain. RGB, yes. RGB is red, blue, red, green, blue. So I have this remote here that gives me, you can choose all the colors you want, or you can do all these ridiculous patterns like the fade, or you can make it do like flashy jumpy. <laughs> so if I add the third shelf, I'll have to extend the strip and then go down to my control box and tie it all in. I think I could do it. I don't think it'd be that hard. But now I really feel like I'm gonna have to go get a third shelf. Because now it's in my head, and I think you're right. Which is something I almost never say. I never think everyone else is right. Phillips Hue, get with it. You can use an app. That is true, and I could tie it into the. Uh, I could tie it into Alexa, so that I could just voice control it. Make things even fancier easier. I wouldn't mind voice control. Then Nicole could hear me in here. 
Alexa, turn off the light. Is RGB a millennial thing? It's a computer and yeah, I mean, kind of. More like, you know, color changing lights is awesome. Add it to everything. Come on. One. Two. Now let's put the drive shaft in before we hook up the other side so we don't have to try and do it. Well, I guess we don't have the drive, we don't have the shocks on, so it's not a big deal at all. Just swing it out of the way. That might as well put the drive shaft on anyway, though. Does RGB do plaid? <laughs> mm, those good old wild board wild board drive shafts are pretty decent, not gonna lie. I don't mind myself a wild boar drive shaft. Where are the RGB scale rock lights? I mean, oh, we really should have more RGB in scale stuff. Like, we all like some customization. Shelves are like tattoos, only in odd numbers. Hmm, that is interesting. I mean, I have three over here, so I get I get the balance comment that. Ben had said. I mean, I'm pretty much, we are pretty much decided I need to get another shelf now. Well, I add this truck to my, this will not be a long-term truck in my collection. This is a truck that I am going to build and then it will be off, off to its forever home. This truck is being built not for me in the long run. Does Nicole like Ikea? Mm. She doesn't like shopping in general. So I would say no. Forever home. It's a truck, not a kid. <laughs> Right, front axle on. Let's put rear. She doesn't like shopping, is Nicole broken? Hey, I'm glad she does shopping. I think Nicole and I have been to Ikea together a few times, but she is not she is an in and out type shop. Like she doesn't, she doesn't spend a lot of time wandering. She just wants what she wants to get out. It's very good for me. Dale C, read the last super chat. Your life depends on it. Hold on. Didn't see that I missed one. Going back. Oh. Dale, more shelving equals more cardboard boxes by the front door because you need to fill said shelves. <laughs> He's pretty sure Nicole would finally kill it. I don't know if you were here earlier, Dale, but the size of the box that came. Oh, I brought in. I think I brought in five boxes today when I got home. So. Well, no, wait, how many boxes did I bring in today? So today I brought in a okay with it yesterday i brought in the the x rider flamingo box this thing yesterday this came in 
So I brought that one in. It was sitting on my computer chair. Today I brought in the one fifth scale motorcycle kit, a box from Hammer Nutrition. Um, there was more. Oh, I think I had, I had, there was an Amazon box, which was actually hers. Then there was something else. I can't remember. But that yesterday that we got the new, we had got a new TV. So the size of the box that that was in, that immediately had to go to the shop today. Go. Do you use the hot wire to your, do you need hot wire to use Tekken servos? You don't need it, no. Cause I've actually never plugged one of my servos into the hot wire. Um, I've always just used them. She's gonna make you sleep outside. Oh, that was the other thing. I got a 50 to 500 time zoom USB microscope. <laughs> That was the other thing I get. There is absolutely no use for such a thing, but I had to have it. <laughs> Do you want to know why you got that? Do we want to know why? <laughs> um, do we want to know why? I'll give you guys one guess as to why I got that. Somebody, somebody can guess. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if you guys. Um, RC Rorschach was set pretty close. Circle maker. It has to do with the circle maker, kind of. <laughs> you can perform your own colonoscopy now. Let's see. What's the off-road motorcycle, off-road trike called? It's called the uh, Flamingo, the X-Rider Flamingo. <laughs> Did Ax Axial finally come out with a one ten thousandth scale? <laughs> screw sucky screw removal. <laughs> no, why I got it. Um, is and why I said it was related to the circle maker is because I saw it on an Instagram ad <laughs> and I was like, that's cool. I should get one. <laughs> why is this not fully seedy? There he goes. It's like a little burr to look at the grooves on your finger. <laughs> I hope it came with some kind of base. It did. It's got a base and it sits on. You can kind of move the stuff under it. You seem to be a marketer's dream. This guy will buy anything, especially if it's cheap and looks pointless. Do stock VS410 Ultras come with overdrive gears? The gears in the portal axles are the overdrive gear ratio. So, and then the transmission has an overdrive percentage built into it. So yes. Josh, I bought one of those laser constellation and storm projectors. It's awesome. I have never seen one of these. You'll have to send me a link. I want to know. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad Josh is keeping the Instagram ad business strong in this time. <laughs> okay, so we got that all done. Like I said, we're not building the shocks. Really, we're building ourselves a roller tonight. Or not a roller, a a not a roller. Let's see. We can put the bumper on. 
Might as well put the receiver box on so I don't lose the screws and stuff. Josh, is bubbly carbonated? It is carbonated. That's the important part. The carbonation is key. It's static water, like TV static. It'll be finished. <laughs> yes, finished is a loose term in these nights. Anybody remember the VS410 Ultra that I went, I did all the wiring even and everything start to finish. Bubbly is so gross. False. Bong loaded. Bong loaded is saying that bubbly is false. That bubbly is gross. No. But funny name. <laughs> Where'd you come up with that? <laughs> And bag jerry. So we need that one and G I Just that lid. Okay. Bubbly equals hot garbage. You guys have terrible taste. I don't know why you watch this channel. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where are all my flathead screws? I feel like I didn't open a bag. Flavored water is awesome. Carbonated flavor is ass. Bong loaded almost as many subs as you. I mean, I'm just saying it's gotta be the name. Been here, my, my channel. I figured it was your channel name. I'm kidding. Like, obvious. That's why mine would say Harley Designs. That is funny. Where the f are the screws? Eh, they're in that bag. <laughs> Josh likes bubbly and also probably eats at Arby's. I do not. Nicole is actually the one who likes Arby's, believe it or not. I, not a fan. Not a fan. <laughs> press one if you, press one if you like bubbly, press two if you don't. <laughs> Let's see. We'll see how many number ones versus number two. The never had bubbly, probably never will eat it. You know, see, my thing was, I really like soda. Like I like, I don't like just water. I don't like, so. If I could, I would drink 10 sodas a day. Like, I just really like soda. But I know that I shouldn't, so I don't. And sparkling water really does gives me the, uh, the satisfaction of that fizzy flavored drink. Therefore, bubbly is amazing. And... <laughs> This live YouTube broadcast is sponsored by Bubbly. <laughs> oh, I would take it. If it was, you would know.
But the one thing is, is that since it's just flavored water, I'm like, well, I can have six a day or whatever. So we order them, I order them for the office. Like, and I've got everybody at the office drinking them now. So I have like three cases a week, three of the 18 packs delivered a week at the office. Let's see. Hi, Josh. I saw the title of this live video and thought, yeah, this is the last of the better kit SCX-10 too. My 9046 kit and the Unimog are the only Axial kits with beefy links. Good, no, good Dura, no room. The, uh, oh, because, yeah, you're talking about the, uh, uh, well, honestly, the, the new Axial kits, I don't mind the stainless links that they have. I like the one-piece design better than the set screw, personally. I like the stainless weight better, or there might actually be coated steel. I'm not sure. The fuck is bubbly? This is bubbly. Buble. <laughs> so sugar or no sugar in water? No sugar in water. No anything. It is the... the Ingredients right here, it says carbonated water, natural flavor. That's it. Nothing else in. That's why I'm okay with drinking too many of them. So is the microscope to look at your wiener? <laughs> God. <laughs> Have you no shame? Right. Let's build some axial beadlocks. Natural flavor might mean might mean sugars. Well, I know what you mean, um, but it, it's. I mean, it says there's total zero total sugars, none added, none in it, but zero grams. We were thinking it. He said it. Yeah, exactly. That if you don't build the shocks, you're cheating. You, listen, I'm not above cheating. That's the thing. Ask Matt. Chris, hello, Salinas Valley. UMG 10 needs panzers. Totally agree. That's what I have on my long wheelbase UMG 10. And I feel like that is the correct, appropriate. Did I not take those out of the box? I did not. I do like the Axial military tires. They're a nice tire and a good size. Why doesn't that truck have portals yet? Portals aren't in stock. How would I get a set? Stock tire foam. I don't even know why we're building these. Stock tire foams on stock wheels. Why would I why would I continue to do this? I don't know. Man, these tires stink though. Ugh. I I much prefer the stink of Proline tires. Let's see. I'm unusually curious to what's going under the microscope. I don't even know. So many things. I'm 
I feel like I'm just going to have to look at things under a microscope. Because if you have a USB microscope, I mean, I'm Nicole Smell the Tire. Oh, let's go. I feel like it's going to be tough to get her to fall for that joke again. He could show gears under a microscope, like Project Farm. Project, what is Project Farm? I'm getting a bunch of Instagram messages about something. Are those 4.3 size tire? Um, 4.6. So they're quite a bit bigger than the Proline one. He should work for DeWalt. I drove a customer's car today that smelled like Proline tires. It was weird. <laughs> Project Farm is a channel that looks at tools and tests them in interesting ways. Oh, interesting. Squeeze, squeeze. You know, one thing I never did see was the hexes and wheel pins. On wheel nuts. Wonder where those are. Is it this bag? Yes, yes it is. Okay, tomorrow I'm buying an axial vehicle. Which one should I get? Oh man, that's a that's a hard one to throw out there. If you, like you're just going to buy one at honestly, the, which has the healthiest aftermarket An SCX 10 two would still have the best aftermarket. Um, an SCX 10 three is the newest and like the bomber or the, uh, other 2.2s. It's kind of starting to fade a little bit just because of, you know, them being an older and less popular area right now. Um, I mean, honestly, if you, if you don't have one at all, like, and you want to just get into it for the, on, the honcho is still one of my favorites as far as the look and everything goes. Like, and you can probably get them pretty cheap is the other thing like but the SCX 10 3 is the aftermarket's going to pick up you know um but it's got its own quirks it's a it's a little bit of a different vehicle Gladiator, the, gl the new Gladiator, which just came out, uh, it's got it does have portals if you like portals, um, and it does have an awesome body. So I agree on both of those points. And the aftermarket is going to be really good, and it's the newest generation. You just have to decide, you know, if it's the style you want. Thanks, man. I got a TRX four. You made me buy a VS410 <laughs> but wanting to build. Oh, well, that's the other thing. I guess if you're looking for a kit, that changes things. If you're wanting to build. Because kit-wise, I could be... There's this one, and there's the raw builder's kit. I don't think you can get the original one. Um, hmm. You, I'm trying to think, but you might be limited to either the raw builder's kit or this, or the new SCX 10 3 JL kit, which is a good kit. I mean, there's, you know, it's a good build. So, and if you already had a VS 410 to build, then you know. get an RGT. I would disagree. RGTs are okay for some things, but I wouldn't 
go there on purpose. Unless it's like the mini world. In the mini world, it's like, you know, all the same, all the same junk, really. Go ahead. They're, you know, it's worried about, you know, the durability of the stuff is so much better with it being so small. So it was wanting to wait on the VS410 till I'm ready. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, I mean, you could pick up an SCX10 3 kit. That would be a, it's not a bad one. You should get a G-Made GOM. No, don't do it. That was one of the worst builds. That thing was, I feel like I should go back and just see if it was just like a really bad day. But that was like one of the worst kits. Like just the design of it overall was such overlapping garbage on garbage. But that's such typical G made. And then I bought the the bomb, and it was better, but still not quite there. Like it was good, but not good enough to be not good enough to be worth the money. Why are we building these rims and tires? Is go Vanquish going to fix the click in the SCX3? I don't know. I don't I don't know if that's gonna be on the I'm it's one of those things that I'm afraid is is one of the that it could be attributed to many things and trying to fix it with one thing is going to leave people disappointed. And it's not a strength issue. So it's like, if it's not something that's just easily repeatable, fixable, which seems to be that people find different ways to fix it. And that's concerning. And then mine doesn't do it. Mine doesn't have a click. So I'm like, I don't know how to make sure that we're fixing the one with the click. SCX3 is a knockoff of a Traxxas. Uh, I would disagree highly there. I mean, I would, like, in what way would that be true? The fact that it has portals and a two-speed? Like, you know, like, like, in what way? Like, other than that, the design, it's got some much more skit. The Traxxas is an absolute beast as far as the, 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 the durability. But the style of the axial is totally different. It's much more scale. It's, you know, as far as the aspects of the design is, you know, with axle appearance, um, as far as it tracks, it didn't put any thought into the actual like scale look of the axles and the skid plate and things like that. They just made it a truck thing, you know, a really good one, but Beyond that, it's it's nothing like it. It's so, I mean, in that you know, in anything other than the fact that it has portals, like it's not. It's, if you're looking at any of the actual design steps, like any of the things that would actually make something a knockoff. I really like. I really like my TRX fours. I love my TRX six now. Um, and I like the SCX three in, but I think that the SCX 10 three is a vehicle of its own. And I think that the scale design is far above the Traxxas, like leaps and bounds. I prefer my TRX4 Sport. I prefer my SCX102 over my TRX4 Sport. I think that that's. I prefer how my SCX102s drive over my TRX4 Sports. I will agree with that fully. Um, 
I think the TRX4 Sport has good value for the durability. I don't think that the performance is as good. Hey, Jeremiah, what did I miss? Thanks for the donation. Uh, I've been playing video games, GTA 5, so much fun. I also scored a lowly 22, 4.0 buggy. Might become a drag car. Um, we're building a UMG kit tonight. It's been going fairly well. We're building the wheels and tires for some reason. Even though they won't be used in the end. The Axial F100 1955 is my favorite SCX 10 II in a long time. It's a cool, like, I, I think that that, that night, that one specifically, that F100, uh, was like the least appreciated SCX 10 II release ever. Am I wrong? Like, it got no traction. Like, people didn't talk about it that much. It just kind of came out and was just kind of like, mentioned and then just was around but it had some really cool design aspects of it the bed was cool and just looked cool in general um i think it was just so underappreciated because i do i think it looked good other than the color the green and that tan color both were kind of shitty colors um yeah like matt kind of he did a little quick talk about it but it just no one else, it never really like picked up a bunch of steam. And, you know, with every one of the other releases, you saw so many of them, you know, getting talked about and picked up. Like, it's crazy. Uh, do you know of any crawler competitions that are going to be held? Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, or Texas? Oh, I don't, I don't know anything specifically in those areas. I would try and see if you can find yourself a local Facebook group in your area. That's usually the best way. Maybe you should do a re-review. You can probably get Axial to send me one if they got a bunch that they're still trying to sell. <laughs> Is it bad if I choke up when I go to my cart and see the total? <laughs> no, I, I know what you mean. I've been there. <laughs> there's There's been a lot of times where I have to... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about it. I'll come back. Think about... And you finally do it so many times. I'm still right now trying to decide if I'm going to pull the trigger on my Prusa printer or not. I bought my, I bought my GoPro Hero 9 yesterday. And I'm, so that made me like, no, nope, I spent money. I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy anything. But I still know that I want to buy that printer. So I don't know. My wish list on Amazon, one at a time, one piece at a time. 19, was it? Get your, get your Johnny Cash on. Did you watch Holmes review today on the Wendigo? Freaking, wait, didn't he do that review like forever ago? Like three, four months ago? Two, three months ago, something like that? Did it maybe just pop up on your feed today? No, it's a, oh, a repair video. Okay. Do you use your GoPro for YouTube content? Uh, yeah. Like when I, a lot of times when I'm like out and about like vlog stuff is, uh, often just shot with my GoPros. Like any of the Axial Fest vlogs or um, the Pro Line by the Fire ones, like all of that stuff was just a hundred percent shot on my little GoPro vlogging setup, which is a the GoPro camera with an external microphone um, and all that, and usually an ND filter. But the new one, well, the eight and the nine. They were supposed to release this media kit and it was, it actually is just becoming available now. So I'm 
but that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I have separate controllers for all my vehicles. How can I drive two at once? Oh, they're fine. <laughs> I, I much enjoy having my vehicles on one controller. It is, it's one of those things that is really nice to be able to just. So I think that's all I'm going to build on this thing tonight. I think that's. From there, I just got to, you know, get the body assembled. Well, assembled. that's not true at all. I have to get the body packed up to ship out. Uh, could you make this 11.3 wheelbase if you left off the rear Lex? It is 11. Well, it's 11.4, right? Stock wheelbase is 11.4. So am I missing something? What are you talking about? Or do you want to take it to a slightly shorter? Sorry, 12.3. Ah, well, sure. If you left off the rear Lexan, you'd have to come up with your own style of body mount since it all hinges. Um, but you'd have, you know, so you'd have to come up with a rear body mount for the cab. But oh, sure. Why not? Um, yeah, finished. It's finished. It's finished for the stage that it needs to be. I mean, basically, this whole truck's going to get. I assembled it just so that I could disassemble it. It's going to get aluminum shock towers. Uh, probably going to switch to a three gear transmission with a dig. So I'm also going to have to put a different battery tray in there. Um, maybe the bumpers will stay. The wheels are going to get changed. Tires will probably stay, but foams will get changed. Um, we're going to swap out to underdrive gears in the rear axle, possibly overdrives in the front. <laughs> like we're going to rebuild the whole truck, but <laughs> you know, We needed something to build on a Friday night. So instead, what I'll do is gather up all the, what Matt say on Wednesday, bits and bobs. I don't know where that came from, but ridiculous. So, you know, gather up all that, put it in a box, get ready, and then start planning all the parts. Matt would install some RC Pearl Drive cute things. <laughs> I'm putting the little center caps on for no reason. Uh, don't you judge us Canadians. Canadians are the best. I agree. Gotta do a Tamaya tank one night. Don't those Tamaya tanks like take forever hours? Like for ridiculous real forever. I'm bit I'm debating on either a three gear trans or a VFD trans from a bill. VFD. Super low forward. If you're putting D 44s on it, take advantage. Take advantage of it. Get rid of our lock tight. Oh, we can put some of our junk away and then I have room to, oh, then I think I can actually, I want, what I don't know is if this new, uh, my new microscope works as a webcam. Because if it does, I could technically broadcast it through this and then, then you guys could see up close stuff live. <laughs> Even better. But it is nice to be able to just so this bench was actually a super nightmare when I walked in because I had all of the uh, stuff from the semi trailer in. and portals. I don't think this thing's going to get portals. Uh, 
I see the gears turning in your head about showing gears on the bench. Such a good idea. Would TRX4 axles work on axial if you use the Traxxas drive shafts? This, um, so the drive shafts don't really matter. They're basically the same thing. Um, just because they're, they're a standard five millimeter output shaft. So the drive shafts don't matter. Um, TRX4s will work for the most part. The, you know, you have, you'd have to make some, because the link mounting spots are almost the same except the pan hard link. So you'd probably have to make yourself a new pan hard link. Not that big of a deal. Um, but everything else pretty much bolts up. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, Fortals on the semi, maybe? <laughs> Uh, what are the other 1.4 wheelbase bodies out there? Oof, I don't know. Um, I don't really know of all that many or of any. Uh, what was the previous Axial 11.4? The Dingo, right? Uh, are 11.4 leaks coming soon? Yeah, um, I'll make a link kit for this thing. We'll get those done. We know you bought the microscope for, we don't want to see it live. <laughs> <laughs> Would any of the Vanquish axles work on the TRX4 Sport without much work? No, no, they wouldn't. Everything would either be a lot of work or just wouldn't work. Mighty FC body. Oh, that's a good one, Phoenix. That was, if you can still find that, because I don't think they make it anymore, do they? Up close gear mesh videos might be monetized. Might get monetized. Dingo, yes. I think Proline has a Jeep. Do that? Maybe like the two? Door? Yeah. CR1 body, originally in a short wheelbase. Yeah, there's a, there's not very many like good aftermarket body choices, at least. I think maybe like you're saying axial, but. Um, it still was available last time. Oh, that's good. Proline Jeep, I thought, got discontinued. Probably. I mean, especially if it was for a short wheelbase, they were probably just like, this doesn't sell. I've got to get rid of this thing. What microscope did you get? I don't know. Something that was on an online ad. That <laughs> was a 50 to, it's a 50 to 500 time microscope. The only problem is, is that the drivers that it come with, comes with is on a CD. And none of my computers have CD drives. Like, none of them. Not, I don't have a laptop. Or a desktop that have a CD drive in it. Oh, yes, that's why, Ben. If I design, if I'm going to have a, a link kit for this, there, it's just going to go into production. Yeah, like for sure, like the circle tray, exactly like the circle maker. Would you ever get a TFL Ford Bronco? No, I've seen one of them up close. Not impressed. And the body, which is hard, hard body, I think that's cool, except that it's like a fiberglass pole and it's not no bueno. Um, cause I'm all for like the buying tube chassis and stuff like that. But that one was a, that one was a hard pass when I saw it. Uh, you can just download drivers. I'm sure that was what I was figuring. So I just have to find it because almost nothing on it is in English. So I have to find the drivers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what a Honda LM, a Honda Element be fitting for the MOG wheelbase. Maybe like a Scion XB even? Have you seen the Injora hard body Bronco? I don't, well, I think that I have because I think it's just a rename of one of the other ones, like the extra speed or something like that. And in general, I'll buy any of the brands that aren't Injora. Like, even if it's the same thing, I'll just buy it from Extra Speed instead of Enjoy. <laughs> hey, Javier, just want to say content is awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you for the donation. Uh, note on the CR1 bodies, 10 inch wheel, the CR, wait, CR01 bodies were a 10 inch wheelbase or the, wait, is that what I'm thinking of? What's the other one I'm thinking of? The one that had like the Tamiya Pajero. Um, CC01. Wasn't that a 10 inch wheelbase? I thought the CR01 was longer than 10 inch wheelbase. Wow. When are you getting a kaiju body? I have to get one because they do look great. I need to find one of those 
pre or unpainted kaiju bodies. Uh, you only ever need you only ever need on weird crawler. Always go Yaris or Miata. Oh my god. Uh, did you see the new bright Bronco West made turned into the international into the scout? I did see that. Yes. Pretty funny. AMC pacer crawler for the win. There's been some quite famous pacer crawlers. CCO one. That that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. CCO one tenant. Uh, what the CRO one was the other to my, and it was the actual crawler. My MST CFX has stopped going in reverse. Have you ever seen this before? That sounds most definitely like a ESC problem or motor. So you have an ESC or motor that's because the drivetrain doesn't really care if it's going forward or reverse. I mean, other than some possible really weird gear damage, but I can't imagine it. Um, so yeah. Why, why do I only see my chat? Weird. I don't know. I see your chat G9000 with everybody else's. Reload your screen. Currently building a Crown Vic on my SCX24. Nice. Pacer Crawler would need Wayne and Garth. In. Yes. So, pretty good one, right? Uh, What's the plan with the trailer? I will get back to that. Uh, it's just been one of those ones that I like. I need to get back into and get um, sorry. Yeah, it's just I need to get back into it, but I need to like get back into the mindset to go work on that thing. So sometimes that happens. Motorcycle time. I am not starting the motorcycle tonight. We're, I'm going to do everything I can to restrain myself from building that motorcycle until next week because I am excited for it too. But this was this week's. I didn't save this one for the stream. I, I wanted to build it too much, but it's so big. You can see why I didn't build it on the stream because it just did like it was it's like two unimogs long. <laughs> like I can just pretty I think I'm pretty sure I could fit two unimogs in here. <laughs> so I don't have the sides or top in here for a reason. It, this isn't how it will be. It will be enclosed, but for now, I don't have it in there. So yeah, this was fun though. I'm looking forward to the actual project that Matt and I are planning to do. No, it won't be soft sides or anything like that. It will be enclosed like a normal trailer, so. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, how many sandwiches do you think would, would hold? <laughs> I think you could fit a six foot subway sub in here. I think you could fit it pretty easily even. Carbon fiber panels. That might be expensive. Grand hauler or king hauler up next. I will be doing the grand hauler. Wait, is it King Hall? I can't remember. It's the one that looks cool. Um, so yeah. Are those corners 3D printed? No, this is all factory. They're plastic. They're just like gray plastic or whatever. But no, this is all factory. This is how it would, there would be the big white, you know, Lexan, or not Lexan, they're like a, like styrene basically. Um, that goes on on the sides and on the top and then it's got the big decals for the side but this is the reefer trailer so it's got like the refrigeration unit on the front and then i didn't do the uh i haven't put all the hardware on the rear doors yet like it's got all the like the functioning latches and stuff like that but that will be uh 
And then of course, you know, you gotta do like paint and all that, but so yeah. It's gonna be fun. But that's what I built this week. It was nice to just, you know, build. It's good stuff. Grand hauler. I think the grand hauler is the one. I just can never remember. It's like the straight up American looking one. Big old stacks. Yeah. It's gonna be so excited. So anyway, I think we're gonna call it for the night, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next, I don't know, all the days. I've been good at keeping a regular schedule. So thanks as always. Come back next time. Come back round. You're, you're nerd here. Oh, how'd that saying go? Good chat. See you next time. Yes. See you guys next time as well. Hit the like button before you leave. See you later.